Uh, this is Marilyn Geary. It's October 23rd, 2009. I'm at the studio of Steve Emery at 38 San Francisco Boulevard in San Anselmo, California. With me here is Lori Thompson. She's a librarian at the Antique Kent, California room of the Marin County Free Library. And two award-winning video producers, Harris Cohen and Kramer Herzog. And this interview of Steve Emery is funded by a California Story Fund grant from the California Council for the Humanities and is part of Marin Mindscapes, a project that's collecting stories of Marin County artists I was born in Fairfax, raised in Fairfax, on uh, a cul-de-sac uh, Muriel place, which was ten houses on a dead-end street with a creek at the end. And all we were all young families at the time, so all the kids would gather in the street and play in the creek and watch the creek rise in the winter time and uh, play in the street. We had two giant oak trees at the turn around at the end of the cul-de-sac and. It was uh, it was really a pleasant environment. I attended Manor School, and it was kindergarten through eighth grade at the time. So there were really big kids on the playground, and uh, my brother and sister were both there. And so I knew a lot of the older kids from my brother, and some of the younger ones with my sister. Uh, I I was a good student. Uh, teachers liked me. Um, until about fourth grade, I guess. And uh, I went to Central School, um, which is now School Street Plaza, and while White Hill was being built, so I was the first graduating class from White Hill School. A group of us would ride our bikes to school, which was something that we did. We did it after school. We'd ride, it was before mountain bikes, so we would ride on the trails and in, into the hills out of Deer Park. and. Deer Park was also a school uh, at that time, and so some of our friends had come from that school. Um, and then I, I, I went to Drake and um, wasn't sure what I was going to do after that, but I did take all the art classes I could at Drake and independent study and worked on some mural, mural projects at Drake at the time and uh, got what I could out of the art department at Drake. And I, I ran track and cross country at Drake. And some of the friends that I maintain are mostly from, from that group. So the mural projects that you were working on at Drake, can you describe those? There was the, the, a new student center was being built when I was there. And so in an independent study art class, a friend and I did a it was about two feet by eight foot mural that we designed and worked on together. It was, uh, it was quite ambitious, and and it, it included the entire you know history of the planet. When did your uh, interest in art develop? I always uh, drew. Uh, I would call it doodling in class. It helped me concentrate, or it was it, it, it was a visual cue for me to um, absorb whatever I was learning. I think, and I was always encouraged by my family uh, to to do that, but I never felt it was a, a serious pursuit or something to grow up to be. To my do. father was a certified public accountant. Uh, he commuted from Fairfax to Burlingame every day before the freeway, uh, which was so he was gone a lot. 
Um, later he went into business for himself in the 60s probably and uh, worked locally and that was uh, a big step for the family but uh, a, a big improvement in terms of him being able to be around more. Um, my mother didn't work until my parents split up and then she worked at the school um, in materials, instructional materials center. So you mentioned going off to college. You went to UC Santa Cruz, is that correct? Yeah, I, I applied for three places that I didn't know much about except um, what I'd heard and scholarships and I was sort of on my own to make those choices and I decided if I got into any of them and got scholarships then that's where I would go. So I went to UC Santa Cruz as a math major with a scholarship. And what was UC Santa Cruz like back in the summer? I was meeting people from Los Angeles and, and that were interesting people that had done very different things. Um, my friends and I grew up uh, camping and hiking and biking in the hills and uh, suddenly we, we were with uh, kids that did other things. And it was very eye-opening, but we were in my kind of environment. We were in the redwoods and we would uh, we explored the campus and the environment and the natural world that, that Santa Cruz was plopped in the middle of there. Um, so it was, uh, it, it was very educational without even taking my first class. <laughs> and, and at what point did, did you change from a math major into art? What happened there? Uh, I dropped out my second year, it was, um, I believe we just bombed Cambodia and uh, I decided that I didn't really know what I wanted to do and so it seemed pointless to continue there. So I took a break and I worked on a, uh, a ranch in Napa and after a while uh, I knew I wanted to go back to college. <laughs> I did a lot of drawing. We had a pretty good printmaking facility and stone lithography. So I loved the idea of drawing on rock. And uh, there's a process where you draw with grease and you etch it and there's a water grease resistance. But basically you're drawing on a smooth piece of limestone. And there was something that was very connecting about that. I've always loved rock and um, so that was my main medium was stone lithography. I also learned um, silk, silk screen printing. I understand Tom Killian was also at UC Santa Cruz at the same time. I'm wondering if you knew him at that time. I was involved with a printmaking co-op um, that came from a group uh, while we were still students was sort of a printmaking and, and we established a co-op uh, downtown in Santa Cruz behind uh, the store of somebody that was very uh, wanted to be involved with art somehow. So we, we set up a studio behind her store and had uh, an etching press and I, I I didn't know Tom at school that I remember, but I remember hearing that there was a uh, woodblock printer out there that was doing things. So I don't think we crossed paths there, but we have many times since then. And at, and at what point did you meet Kathleen? Uh, we were actually in the, um, that first Aquatint class that I took, um, and then a couple of years later, uh, she was part of the class with Jack Cooper that we built the studio downtown together. Um, and how did your relationship develop? Um, I, I, there was a giant billboard outside the Santa Cruz Art Center and we decided to uh, that the building should rent it 
and have a design competition for to get people in there for those people that were running the galleries that we were more of a working studio but I submitted my designs for the billboard competition and won them so um, it was a nine by 34 foot billboard that was all in three by four foot paper panels that um, I had to then carry out. <laughs> so um, Kathleen had a background in um, graphic design and arts and that include, included lettering so she did the lettering for my billboard so that was the beginning of a beautiful relationship that after we were done with the Santa Cruz Art Center and it was time to move on we went to Europe for five months. And, and what did you do in Europe? What did you see? We sort of followed the um, roots of art history. We wanted to see those things we'd seen in art history slideshows and life. And so that, <clears throat> from there we went to, um, we had a little trip to Corsica because I had a, a, my aunt was from Corsica. So we visited her parents briefly and then ended up in, in Crete for uh, six weeks. And not very many tourists were in Crete at the time, so all the restaurants were trying to get people in. So we went in and met somebody from Monterey who taught music in Monterey and a great family. He was on sabbatical and a poet and a printmaker. And this family found out we were a Calitechnic, which is the artist, and they were, had to close to build a second bathroom. So they proposed a mural on their warped green masonite panels and it was about five feet by six feet and so we painted a mural on their uh, green masonite panels for, it took us about three weeks. And uh, they would, it was the harbor so it had the Venetian port, the lighthouse with the boats tied, the beautiful boats tied up out in front. So at what point did you come back to the States? From uh, Greece, we flew to Detroit, which is where Kathleen's from, and spent time with her mother. Uh, we had $23 left. So we got a drive away Mercedes, um, which needed to be transported to San Francisco. So it comes with $100 if you get it there. So we drove a Mercedes across the country and landed here and collected our hundred dollars and both my grandmothers who were still living in San Anselmo when we left, they both died while we were on this five-month trip. Um, so we had um, two houses in San Anselmo that we sort of shared time with. My sister was uh, also living uh, at my other grandmother's house, and then this one was, I guess, being cleaned up. So after you came back from uh, Europe, you came back to Marin County and spent some time in this house where you're living now. We moved in here with my sister. Each of us had two small rooms, so we each had a studio. Uh, we each had artwork going. Kathleen was a kind of a graphic design, uh, graphic artist at the time. Um, I did a few odd jobs, but um, soon we were printmakers. So that in the early days, uh, we we would do uh, local art festivals, uh, and the Mill Valley Art Festival in from 1980, I think, or 81. Sausalito Arts Festival from the same era. They, when they were, Sausalito was in the old schoolyard. Um, and after a few of those shows, we had we ended up having enough to buy the house for my family. Um, when two artists go in for a loan for a mortgage, it's you have to put up. A lot. <laughs> My mom helped with 
financing and uh, we had to put about a third down but we did it after an art festival and so we were fortunate to be buying from family and um, having good art festivals that uh, are very supportive in the Marin County area. Can you talk a little bit about the house and its history? Well, I, I remember it first as coming here for Christmas Eve's. Um, my uncle, who is a large red-faced man in a Santa suit, and I had four cousins, and there were my brother and sister and I, and so there would be seven kids, and my mother's two large brothers, and uh, my, my grandmother and grandfather, and uh, I don't know how we all fit in here, but um, um, they bought it in the early 20s, I believe, 23 or 1925, and added on different sections. It just started out as a original square and with a fold-down bed, and um, I don't remember any of that. I just heard it, and then portions were add on, added on for kids, and then my great-grandparents moved in, and so this wing was built for them. How does it feel to live in the house where your grandparents lived? Uh, at times it's weird, um, but when we have our open studios, which we started doing right away when we began living here, it's a nice connection. and. The longer I'm here, the more meaningful it is that it has roots that go back 80, 90 years. You mentioned 1985. Um, that's, I believe, the year you got married. Can you talk about your uh, marriage ceremony? We'd been together for about seven years, and we lived here for uh, six. Um, and we decided that we would like to celebrate and be married and um, had an I some ideas of what we would like to do to, to celebrate that with everybody. Um, my brother worked out at Point Reyes on and off the National Seashore for a while and um, we we loved Divide Meadow uh, along the Bear Valley Trail and thought it was somewhat significant that there would be a union at the Divide. And so we did a little um, silkscreen print as our announcement and um, we sent it out in this rather large package of uh, about the ceremony and everybody got this little silk screen print and um, I, some of my college roommates were musicians, one of which played the trumpet, uh, so he played in a, a brass quintet, so they agreed to haul their large instruments out there a mile and a half and uh, another friend from who was in the music and film industry and he uh, composed a piece for us that the brass quintet played. Um, I, we entered, we had 150 people out there in the meadow facing downhill in the meadow and Kathleen and I were up in the trees and I had made my own frog suit so I came down with Kathleen and my frog suit and from afar, one of her friends asked, oh, you know, how tacky, he's wearing green. Um, but then when we got close enough, <clears throat> my brother and her sister had done a little introduction that was full of bad puns. And uh, I, she kissed the frog and I took it off and then we proceeded to each tell stories for about 45 minutes and about things we'd done together and why we enjoyed each other and what we planned to do together. 
And uh, after that, I don't remember much. <laughs> <laughs> I remember being way up in a chair, hoisted by a bunch of friends, and glad I survived it. It was fun. It was a nice day, and everybody made it home. Well, what's it like being married to another artist? Well, I often say that, tell people that you know she copies everything I do, <laughs> but then she says the same thing. <laughs> but we each have always had our own work. We've done a lot of work together. The silk screens was a really good way for us to work together as a, a team. It was her artwork, but I, it was a, a very uh, divided labor. And we, did, we had to proof things together. And then once it was right, it was sort of my responsibility until the next phase. And then she would have to work on it and then work with it together. And the way that she worked, it took two or three months for, to complete an edition of um, but you end up with many prints. And that was a really good way, and I saw that as a really good way for her to get a lot of work out. And we, since we were both involved, it supported both of us, and I could continue to do my work. And that was her work primarily in the early d days. And then when our son was born, this was her studio. And it was no longer possible for us to both dedicate all of our time together uh, out there in the garage. And so we both began doing more projects on our own. It works, but, it, but separate studios is essential. And, um, discovering different sources of inspiration. Some of that we share. Um, we both will spend time up at the lakes. Since I was, since I got so involved with running, she decided that she would enjoy running again. She used to 20 years ago, and so we both spend a lot of time up at the in the water district lands around Bon Tempe Lake and. Um, we've, her subjects are very different than my choices. Um, and so it's, it's the same places, the same sources of inspiration, but seen very differently. Um, Kathleen goes for a more open panoramic vista and I see more myself moving through a landscape. That even if I'm out there, however long I might stop, whether in the early 90s I was going out painting a lot, but it's still just passing through. And especially now that I'm running through these places, there's a sense of movement through it. It's not being there and capturing it, it's taking it all with me or passing through it in, with, with a sense of time. So I tend to focus smaller and um, some form of path or light that um, they're more intimate portraits of places. I grew up in the Sierras. That Those were the highlight of my youth. We would go to this wonderful place in the Sierras every year and uh, it was just granite and water and we would slide in the rock slides and swim all day, run barefoot and even today, that's where I feel most at home. 
And I'm not there often enough to work from that. But even when I was growing up here and exploring the trails in my backyard, it it was it reminded me of that and and it was a similar experience to that. It was still being out there and uh, breathing fresh air and hearing sounds that you pay attention to if you know what they are. Well, getting back to the um, the garage where you started out doing the silkscreen printing, can you talk about the process of of creating one of those uh, prints? Um, well, after the first few years um, of experimentation and somewhat simple images, uh, it was apparent that Kathleen had bigger, more involved ideas. So, as we got better and worked out the equipment and technical details, uh, the addition size would grow, which meant starting with a, you know, a stack of paper that's like this, 200 sheets of fine quality paper. And uh, the way she works is largely background to foreground and then in the foreground, light to dark. That's the way the printmaking process works with what it is that she wants to do in a landscape form. So the skies are not one color, they're multiple colors, but it's one screen. So that involves mixing separate colors and blending them on the screen and then bringing them across slowly so that it has time to roll over. And what kind of work were you doing in this period of your own? How, I was mostly a drawer. Um, it, c it came from, um, I, I liked drawing, I liked uh, colored pencil and uh, pastel. Um, I was experimenting with taking a drawing more than one direction at a time. I would print my own screen prints with very simple early elements, like with different colors, and print eight of them, maybe in different colors, but with the same stencils, the same basic starting lines. And then I would put them all up and take one, one direction and another, another direction. So I painted out in Point Reyes for about a week before the fog came in. And then I thought my painting days were out there were over. But I started out, got to the Alima Hill and saw the fog and stopped there and took my stuff and went out and explored the whole Alima Bolinas Ridge. Um, often I would go out and do five or six different, begin different things. I've never been a outdoor fast painter, but I put down reminders and I would go back to those places and I would put them up in my studio and crop them and work them, finish them back in my studio. I took pictures after the day was done or the pieces that I was might be working on. Um, often I would go back out to the places and then beyond because I'd already painted the first spot and then look back and paint the other side of what I'd done the day before. And that was a that was an interesting experience of like I had I still had the memory of what it was like to be looking the opposite direction for a long period of time, studying a particular boulder tree shadow and then being on the other side and having something completely different, but it was 
the same. It was sort of a it, it was sort of that reminder of of passing through it, being having an element of time as part of the setting. And from my printmaking experience of layering, I decided to give acrylics a try. I'd never liked the idea because they're very plasticky on a sealed surface, but on a fine hot press watercolor paper, um, diluted, they, it just makes for transparent layers that don't come back up when you go over them. So I could be very sketchy in early stages of these paintings, very transparent, and get them back into my studio and still be able to put more darker, deeper uh, elements in for the composition. Each paper has its own inherent texture that after a certain amount of transparent layers, it eventually does seal the surface. So even the darkest, deepest spaces then have their own texture, which is the texture of the paper. So it's not a brush stroke texture, it's, uh, it's the pap paper texture. It's a you have two very distinct bodies of work. Um, one is more the landscape, intimate landscapes, and the other is very different. Can you talk about your other uh, body of work a little bit? The, the other body is as close as I get to um, not having a concept when I approach a blank sheet. But there is always an element of a certain curve or form that I want to start with. Um, so that's, I don't know what to call them, but there's off, often a, an element of um, music in them. Um, um, music has always been influential and it's not the music so much as the thinking about a form of art that goes with music. Uh, so I've started to think of my latest pieces along those lines as um, lyrical, being like the words to a song. A melody. I've always played piano and I also play accordion. I play with um, five people that I graduated from high school with and we play here mostly and uh, twice now in public at art receptions and uh, it's really fun and I've started, I've always wanted to write music but I never have until recently, and so it's a start. I didn't know how to do that. I didn't know the process, so I wrote my first song, and we've been singing that, and uh, I love singing, um, so that's become more of a part of it, and Kathleen loves singing, and it's something that we didn't know about each other when we, probably even when we got married, so she's joined us, Backup, one of our backup vocalists and it's just really fun to play music. Uh, I see that your one of your paintings became on the cover of Barry Spitz's Tamalpais Trails. Can you talk about how that came about? Uh, Barry's a neighbor and he lives just across the field. Um, he's always come by our Open Studios, um, loves both of our work and has traded, um, and always bought Kathleen's note cards and loves Mount Tam and loves the Dipsy and those traditions and histories of Mount Tam. Um, so when he did his trail book, he used a, his original version, he used an image of Jim Vitex on the cover, um, who was an old friend of my father's. So I knew Jim for going way back. And then it got to the fourth or fifth edition and then he used one of Kathleen's images. 
And then the latest edition, he uh, included a section on Kent Lake and the Pine Mountain region. So he wanted, he saw a painting of mine that was out that area. And uh, so I worked with him to, to do that. And to often connections are made with somebody who knows somebody that, you know, my father went to school with. You mentioned uh, Mr. Vitek, who was a friend of your family. He and my father went to high school together. And I think they were on the TAM track team, because everybody from San Anselmo went to TAM. They took the train to TAM. Um, my, my father was always interested in, in track and running. Uh, he was a pole vaulter at TAM, and uh, Pat Paulson was on his team and was also a pole vaulter. Um, I think Vitek was a miler, that he would run the mile and then uh, it, was, it wasn't until he was done, until he was really warmed up um, or his heart started beating. It was some, some form. But he would come over for dinner and he always had great stories. Uh, uh, one, one memorable occasion of meeting Jim Vitek was on one of my favorite trails on TAM, the Northside Trail. I was up there with my friend Brad Rippy, who was knowledgeable about TAM and stagecoach runs. And we'll often dive into the bushes to look for something that was left, might be left behind. We were running the Northside Trail, and we were in the clouds. It was very low clouds, and this hooded figure with a scythe. <laughs> it looked like a scythe. It looked like death coming at us. And the closer we got, it was, it was Jim Vitek. He was doing some trail work with a saw on a handle or something. And uh, we stopped and said hi to him. <laughs> we, thought our, we, went, we thought we'd met, met, met our maker. <laughs> but um, he, he would come to our open studios. He was very appreciative of both of our work. And, um, and had, you know, would always tell stories when he was here. So. I have a, a winter run that I usually do after, between storms, I try and do it, it is uh, the Kent Trail along Alpine. Um, all the creeks are running and Often you have to, uh, they're running so high that you, I have to be careful crossing them. Um, anyway, taking the Kent Trail all the way to the Carroll Mark Trail and then all the way to Cataract, which is um, after the first few rains is really rushing nicely. And the mosses are all out. And where, where do you get your inspirations from? How does that work? There's elements of my trips into the Sierra that um, I, I, I live with and I'm not sure what they are. What, sometimes it's just a color or, uh, or it, just, a, that, just that, that feeling. Um, and the same is true here. It's, it's that feeling of being there more than seeing something. It's more than a visual sense, but it's my job to make it a, a visual experience that includes those other things. So uh, I, I get inspiration from the music that I listen to while I work more than being inspired by that music to work, but the music enters part of those same shapes and colors that I, I start with and find in the natural world. And how you got initially involved in the Marinscapes uh, art show. Can you talk a little bit about that? Uh, yeah. Kathleen was uh, instrumental in the beginnings of the Marinscape show. Uh, Mimi Griffin, who was on the board at the time, was um, they were having garage sale, flea market type fundraisers and asked Kathleen for some posters. 
and uh, the, the, the artwork that Kathleen donated uh, was, um, made more money than the other things that they so that they saw some potential there. So it was because of Mimi Griffin that we became involved. She, um, she was an old friend. Uh, her daughter was a friend of ours and still is. So that, that started Kathleen's involvement with them. And I was not doing landscape at the time, but soon afterwards was and then have been a part of that show ever since. What's it like to have lived in the same place where you grew up and know all these people and have all these connections. It's very, I, th I think, unusual for, for, the, for this kind of uh, continuity. It, it wasn't until um, later that it's, I started feeling like claiming this as my home. This was, you know, my sense of place was this place and that it was meaningful that this is the home that my great-grandparents lived in for a while and that my mother grew up in. The older I get, the more I enjoy being, having, being able to say that this is where I grew up.